Good morning, uh, Rocco Stano here from uh, TLA, also known as Texas Library Association Conference in Dallas, Texas. And this morning, I have Mary H.K. Choi, debut author. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I I'm doing well, considering this is like day three for this conference, and, uh, and we keep moving right along. Is this your first uh, library conference? Yes, I mean, with my debut, this is my very first TLA, which is kind of nerve-wracking. <laughs> It's massive, and I have an appreciation for the sheer size of Texas, but this is like really, really wonderful, slightly overwhelming. They do everything. It's true, it's true. <laughs> and your book, Emergency Contact. Now, when did uh, the book come out? Um, just over a week ago, so I feel bananas, but good bananas, I yes, think. Yes. yes. So tell us a little bit about Emergency Contact. So it is a novel it's set not in high school but actually in college and it's about two human beings who are very tender-hearted who essentially fall in love over text and texting gives them a safe space in which to sort of like workshop their feelings and actually become friends before anything romantic develops yeah I'm sorry. yeah no that's no. a no I, and uh, and one of the characters uh, is based in Texas it's true. Actually, both of them are based in Texas, but I actually went to college at UT Hookham, and so that's where I set the scene. And I really like the idea of them being physically like close to each other, but never see each other. So that was like an interesting thing that I deployed. Right. So, uh, um, so a good part of the book is written in text. Very true. Uh, yeah. Very true. <laughs> so uh, for uh, for our viewers. Why don't you just read a, uh, a section that's written in text? Sure. My mom's coming. It was 8.42 a.m. on a Saturday. Perfect time to bring up topics she'd been avoiding for months. This is Penny, by the way. Texting with Sam. Is that good or bad? Suboptimal. Not a fan? Nope. Me neither. Of mine. Why? You go first. Penny always had to go first. No, you. Sam went first. My mom shouldn't have been a mom. Why? She's an alcoholic. Whoa. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. What else? Isn't that enough? You tell me. I think she hates me. She doesn't hate you. Penny wrote before she thought about it. What the hell did she know? Some moms eat their young. Some do it without meaning to. Are we good there? Yes. Terrific. Okay. So that was all through text. Yeah, yes. So, uh probably can do a performance you know a two a two character performance right, just, just trace a seam down the middle and just go both right, ways or yeah. a man and a woman true yeah, yeah. I'm always trying to save money <laughs> <laughs> so that's my solve on that yeah yes. so um, well I'm just uh, I see that your Twitter handle is Choi to the world I think that's very uh, creative I heard that like lilt of you singing that. Um, so last, my last name is Choi. So it's kind of like me, I guess, chumming the waters or like sprinkling um, sort of particles of me into the world. So that's kind of what Twitter is for. Yeah. Right. And uh, so uh, age group for this book. Mm, I feel like that's going to have a heavy asterisk on it. I mean, it does trigger warning, have some reference to sexual assault and some grown-up themes. So I would probably say a precocious, you know, 15-ish to pretty much wherever. Right. Well, maybe a crossover. It's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. And so um, so you're a Korean-American, and were you born here in the U.S.? No, I was actually born in Korea, and then I lived in Hong Kong until I was 14. So I moved to America when I was 14, which was a jarring experience. So uh, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> so when you say a jarring experience, do you, does any one thing stand out? Well, I mean, I hate to be reductive and say, like, America, the monolith, because we <laughs> absolutely all know that not to be true. But when I moved to America, it was, I moved to Texas, a suburb of Texas. And so it wasn't a, um, an America I'd ever really seen on TV, save, you know, the soap opera of Dallas, I mm -hmm. suppose. And so it felt like a very culturally American America. And the part of it that blew my mind just clear into outer space was how heavy the sky was. I mean, growing up in Hong Kong, it's just, you're just 
covered in skyline. And in Texas, it was just the entire horizon. And that was kind of amazing. Right. I actually uh, noticed that from my hotel window when I opened the door. Right. The right. sky feels heavy around you. And now that I live in New York, I have the same appreciation for that. And it's and I love I love Texas thunderstorms. I love sunrises here. I just I, I love that sort of like frisson of like electricity in the air when you're about to have a thunderstorm. I, I, I'm a big fan of the sky here. <laughs> And uh, besides uh, being a YA author, a, a debut YA author, uh, you write for various publications. I do. I've, I've written for everyone from the New York Times to GQ to Wired, Allure, Cosmo, um, basically a lot of magazines. And um, I, I'm on television sometimes uh, for Vice News Tonight on HBO. Mm -hmm. I'm an occasional culture correspondent. A culture correspondent. Yeah. So you uh, uh, review or uh, report on any sort of like anthropologically specific and weird faction is what I'm into. Oh, so the weirdest, the weirdest thing you've uh, reported on. I interviewed Justin Bieber's pastor recently, <laughs> um, and so that's kind of those. I, I interviewed Gwyneth Paltrow for Goop. Mm -hmm her uh, lifestyle brand, and so they were having a convention, so we, we covered that. I mean, these are the sort of things I like. Anything involving mysticism, crystals, um, I'm not going to say cults, but kind of cult adjacent, um, and any sort of flavor of internet that mm -hmm. is odd is, is my kind of scene. So are you an influencer? <laughs> I think that's like the meanest accusation you can levy on any human. It's like, what do you want? Some kind of curator or taste taker? Um, I, I, I don't, I, I won't, wouldn't call myself an influencer. I am merely the embodiment of a confluence of different interests that might not normally cross streams. Right. And uh, so how long did it take to write uh, emergency contact? Like a half hour. <laughs> Give or take. Um, probably the first draft half a year, and then just like the dogged gruel of rewrites and edits, probably another year after that. And uh, did, uh, was Simon & Schuster the first publisher, or did you have to, you know, have a few rejections? I feel like this is a very like, um, kiss and tell sort of scenario you're painting me into. No, um, actually I was really, really fortunate that when we went to the world with it, there was quite there was a hullabaloo, a hubbub. No, a small hubbub. Uh, was there a bidding war? There, there, there was a bidding skirmish. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it a full-fledged war. But, and that was incredibly flattering. And Simon & Schuster I wound up going to because um, of this thing called money. No, because <laughs> the editor there just blew my socks off. I didn't get to meet her in person. Her name is Zareen Jaffrey. And we Skyped. And... After I'd been like talking to a lot of different people all day, it almost felt like a conversation between friends after a long day of work. And I was like, oh, you mean I could have you rummaging in my guts and rewriting this with me? Like, please, like, let's make this work. So, Was she a test master? No, she's kind of zen about it. She's definitely the person to give you enough space and then just sort of like loom, but not in like an overbearing way. And then just have like really exacting taste. So you basically just end up wanting to do well by her. Mm -hmm. So uh, debut yes. uh, novel. So is there, as the, they say, a sophomore no novel? <laughs> sophomore makes it sound like it has to be a slump, just with, like the alliteration <laughs> and like the hex of it all. Um, there is. I just I, I finished a second novel. I haven't yet given it to SNS, but I, I hope to soon. And I'm actually writing a third. So. Yeah, anything to make the sort of um, lamb stop screaming in my head about the fact that my debut is finally out. So I'm, I'm working on a number of things simultaneously. Well, can you tell us where the uh, second book is based? Yes, in New York. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, in Manhattan? Um, actually, in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Right, uh, and uh, I'm assuming there are teen characters in that one. Actually, well, there's one about to turn 20, mm -hmm. and then one in her early 20s. Oh, 
uh, well, terrific. And uh, so, uh, and uh, do you do a podcast or anything like that? I do, actually. <laughs> Thank you. What a convenient plug. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> it's called Hey Cool Job. You can find it on iTunes. It's basically me asking people about their jobs. Like I had this whole theory for a long time that I had the wrong job until I fell into um, writing books. And so I was just interrogating people about their job to see if maybe I could like take it from them. No, <laughs> no, to see if I can learn. Cause I feel like so many jobs these days are made up. And mm -hmm. so it's about people with unorthodox career paths, entrepreneurs, things like that. Great, so it's called, again, the title of the um, podcast? You really are selling this for me beautifully. It's called, Hey, Cool Job. <laughs> okay, remember that. Hey, Cool Job. I have hey, a cool job with Kidlet TV, and thank you for thank you. coming, and congratulations on emergency contact. Thank you so much.